Welcome back everybody. This is our video solution to problem three from quiz four. In this problem we're going to find the TNB frame for a curve given by a parameterizing function r. So when we say find the TNB frame we mean we're going to find the unit tangent vector, the unit normal, and the unit binormal. So what does that mean? Well you imagine you have some curve, this is maybe going through three space, and at each point you would like to be able to draw an orthonormal coordinate system, right? So orthonormal meaning that there's three axes which are all orthogonal to each other, the normal part meaning that they're all length one when you, you draw these unit vectors. So you might, for example, here uh, have your tangent vector t to the curve. Uh, then you're going to have a normal vector which is going to be orthogonal to t. Now there's a couple of actually many you know, different options you might think, but um, this is going to face in a direction which shows you which direction the curve is uh, changing, right? So going down here, so our normal vector will point this way. And then you're gonna have a binormal vector which you obtain just by taking the cross product of t with n. So there'll be a, a third vector which is per perpendicular uh, to both of those. And if we moved along the curve somewhere else, okay, now we get another, uh, t, and now we have an n which is going up at this point, showing which way the curve is going, and then again you have a, a b which is really coming out of the screen, orthogonal to both of these two vectors. So these are your, your t and b frames. And uh, let's see, so how do we, we actually compute these? So the unit tangent vector you get by taking the derivative of the position vector, and then of course we want it to be uh, a unit vector, so we're going to normalize by dividing by the length. To get the unit normal vector, we actually just have to take the derivative of the unit tangent vector. Now sadly, this is not typically going to be a unit vector, so we again will have to normalize. And then finally, to get the unit binormal, well, once you have two vectors which are perpendicular, you can get a third perpendicular vector uh, by just taking the cross product. And since t and n are perpendicular, and since they're both unit vectors, the cross product will also be a unit vector, so I don't actually have to divide by a length at the end. All right, so let's give this a try. So first thing, we need the derivative of r. So we just differentiate component by component. We get negative sine of t, we get negative cosine of t, and then we get one. Now, of course, we're gonna need the magnitude so let's see, that'll be the square root of, well, we have to square each of these. When we square them, the negatives will go away. So we'll just end up with sine squared plus cosine squared plus one. And of course the sine squared and cosine squared add up to one. One plus one is two. So the magnitude is the square root of two. All right, so dividing by the magnitude, we're gonna write one over root two times negative sine of t, negative cosine of t, comma t. Of course, I could distribute this one over root two into all three of the components. I'm not going to, though. It's a little bit easier to, to keep it outside in the, the, uh, the next calculations. All right, so next we need to compute the derivative of this unit tangent vector. All right, well, first thing we have this one over root two. That can just stay out there as a constant. Derivative of negative sine will be negative cosine. Derivative of negative cosine is sine. And the derivative of, oh, we copied this down wrong. This was a one. Derivative of one is zero. All right, now we also need to know the magnitude. So the one over root two, that just sticks around when you compute the magnitude. And now we have the square root, well, again, of the sum of the squares. So we'll get cosine squared plus sine squared plus zero squared. Again, cosine squared plus sine squared is one, plus zero is, is still one, square root of one is one. So actually the entire magnitude will just be one over the square root of two. Of course, we're dividing by the magnitude. So we're dividing by one over the square root of two, which is the same as multiplying by the square root of two. So when I do that, actually I'll get the square root of two times one over the square root of two. Hey, that's fantastic. Those are gonna cancel and I'll just get negative cosine of t, sine of t, comma zero. Okay, well last but not least, I need to compute now the cross product of t with n. 
So this one over root two, I can just let that stick around and I'm just going to work with these two vectors now. Okay, to get the cross product to first cross off the first column and do a cross multiplication. So negative cosine of t times zero, which is zero, minus one times sine of t. So in total, we'll get zero minus sine of t. So negative sine of t. All right, next, I'm going to cross off the middle and I'll go backward now. So one times negative cosine of t minus negative sine of t times zero, which will end up just being negative cosine of t. And then finally, I cross off the third column, multiply across, I get negative sine times sine, that's negative sine squared, minus negative cosine times negative cosine, that'll be cosine squared. So we get negative sine squared minus cosine squared, that's, that's gonna be negative one. All right, so our binormal vector Okay, in the, looks like in the X and the Y components, we actually get the same thing, but you can see in the Z coordinate, it's pointing in the opposite direction. 